Good afternoon, class. In this video, what I'd like to do is continue what I did in the last video with the acceleration due to gravity problems. And in this case, it's the, going to be the exact same problem. So a ball is dropped off of a cliff from rest and it fell for three seconds. If it, fall, or if it falls for three seconds, how tall is the cliff? You are on Earth. Same problem as we did last time. However, if you'll notice, the, the difference is that I changed this direction to, to, of, of positive from being down to up. This has major implications for how you write the problem. Does it change your answer? No, the answer is still 44.1 meters like we, like we discussed in the last video. However, how you approach it and the pitfalls that could occur are a little bit different. And so it's one thing to be aware of it and be able to deal with it in a constructive manner. So we did the same thing, dropped, it, was, it dropped off a cliff from rest. The only other thing I'd like to point out between my last video and this video is if you said dropped, that also could mean that V initial is zero. Rest is a good, is a good indicator, but you, the word, just the word dropped is also an indicator that your initial velocity is zero. So those are two key words that I want, to, I want you to understand. Make sure you keep that in the, just in the back of your mind. Okay, everything else is the same. However, the, because this direction of positive is now up instead of down, the acceleration due to gravity, if you'll notice right here, is now negative. It is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Does this have any real effect on the math and, and our answer? No. However, it can lead to confusion, and that's why I wanted to do a separate video so you can compare and contrast the last video with this exact same problem to this video where I just changed the direction that was up. Now, this may all be fine for you if you only pick one direction always as positive. So if you always say up is positive, then that's fine. You can, you can use this video as your way of solving everything, every gravity problem from now on. If you always pick down as positive, that's fine too. You can use the other video to help you solve any, any gra gravity problem that you find from now on. However, if you want to be truly flexible and, and if you want to say, hey, I don't really care which one it is. I don't care if up is positive, I don't care if down is positive, I don't care if um, to, the, to my left is positive or to my right is positive, it doesn't matter. To me, you know, that's true flexibility in your thinking. However, at this, um, at this level of physics, it's not a terrible thing to just declare one direction positive and just stick with it all the way through. It's fine. So well, that's why I made both videos, just to see, see which one you, could, you might wanna do. So in this case, there are a couple of considerations. Because gravity points down and we declared up to be positive, we've introduced a negative sign. This is important because you have to make sure you stick it into the answer so that all the math works out. Because, because you're introducing this extra negative, negative sign, you have to be very, very careful how you deal with um, the math afterwards because sometimes you'll get an answer and it's negative when it should be positive. And so you want to be very careful about that. And you'll see why in a minute. So we do the exact same thing. All the numbers are the same as the last time as the last video. So all we're going to do is we're going to use y equals y initial plus v initial t plus one half a sub y t squared. And we're going to just plug in our numbers and go from there. So here we go. Y initial is zero. So I put in a zero. V initial is zero. So I put in a zero. The time is three. So I put in that one half. But this time it's negative 9.8 times three quantity squared. Does this change much? As you can see, not really. All that happened was that there was this um, half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. And again, so it's basically, I did the exact same steps, I just have an extra negative in there. This will come up when we go, go to other topics because sometimes, especially in things like momentum or any kind of forces where there maybe are two objects interacting and it's not just one object interacting with gravity. If there's two objects, Direction will matter, you know, very much. And those negatives will actually impact what your answer will be. You'll see that in future videos. But I just wanted to give a little bit of foreshadowing here. 
So what we find, negative 4.9 times 9, like we did in the last video when you pulled out your calculator, you get the answer of negative 44.1 meters. Wait a minute, it's negative. Is that a problem? Because really, can you ever travel negative 44.1 meters? Is there ever a time when you can travel a negative distance? While that may sound silly to you, and it is because it's actually not possible to travel negative distances, because we declared artificially that this direction up is positive, we've created a scenario where the ball actually did travel in the negative direction because we declared a direction positive. So that is a consideration you might want to make whenever you are working on these gravity problems especially. Not, and it could be for anything, really. It's just that you want to pick the direction. And that's my hint to you. You want to pick the direction where gravity or where something that is beyond your control, like gravity, you can't determine which way it'll point. It points in whatever direction it will naturally gravitate or gravitate towards, excuse the pun. So whichever way gravity points, you have no control over that. However, you have control over the direction that you declare positive. And if you declare the correct direction or the more convenient direction to be positive, you will have more positive numbers. You will not have as many negative numbers to deal with. And that may be easier for you. So I throw that in there just to say, think about it. It's up to you how you deal with the problems yourself. So let's, let us continue. We look at this and we say, okay, that's negative 44 meters. I mean, is it true that the ball traveled negative 44.1 meters? Yes, because we declared this to be zero and this to be the, the final dis position and up is positive. So it went from zero and it went in the negative direction. So it is correct. However, the cliff is not negative 44.1 meters tall. That actually makes no sense because while the ball may have traveled from one position to another, the cliff's height is unchanged. It's still a positive number. A cliff has, cannot have a negative height. That actually doesn't make sense because if it had what we would consider a negative height, then it would not be a cliff. It would be a hole or a valley. So words, that's why, like I said in my other video, why vocabulary matters, Vocabulary matters, right? If you call this a cliff, it's a cliff. And so its height must be positive. Even a hole is always, it's not measured from ground level down as, as a negative number. It would be, you would measure not the height of the hole, but the depth. So words are very important. Please keep that in mind. So that's, and that's exactly why from our last video, I said it would matter that you write your answer out as a sentence. Because now when you say, okay, the cliff is 44.1 meters tall, yeah, your answer was negative 44.1 meters, but the answer to the question of how tall is the cliff remains the same. So I wanted to point that out. Again, if you wanna um, use, this as a, this, use this video, replay this as many times as you need to to make sure that it, it makes sense, feel free to do so because that's, that's one of the reasons why I do this. So good luck on this. Practice hard and may the force be with you.